What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and this is a movie that is a little random, uh, but I was looking for films to do for my 31 days of horror movie reviews, and this is a movie that I saw when it came out, and so I decided to rewatch it now. The Haunting in Connecticut. This is a 2009 film that is based on true events. <laughs> This is directed by Peter Cornwell, and the plot. The plot is we meet this family who moves to this town because their son was diagnosed with cancer, so they want to be closer to the doctor and have that access there. And Kyle Gallner plays Matt. He's the one who experiences the paranormal stuff going on in this house. And the whole movie is just him going down dark corridors, hallways, looking in rooms, jump scares galore, uh, creepy images, but not a whole lot of shit happening until the last like five minutes. And then even that, you go, was that anything? Was this whole movie pointless? Well, what I think of The Haunting in Connecticut was, I thought the whole film was pointless, honestly. I like this cast. And I think the story itself, look, obviously if I really went through this myself, it says based on true events, ha ha ha. But if I did go through it, yeah, sure, it'd be the most terrifying thing ever. But for some reason, this came off as hollow, as empty. I didn't feel any emotion for these characters. Even though, like I said, the characters or the actors I like. I, I really enjoy Kyle Gallner. I don't see him around as much as I used to, but I like him. I, I, I buy him as an actor. This role, though, this character, this Matt dude, is is a bitch <laughs> and that feels messed up because of what he's going through and sure i feel for that but it's like as a as a as somebody that i'm trying to follow and attach to and relate to i don't i don't care about anything that that's going on and i think he just makes dumb decision and just all all, all of these scenes all these long strolling down the halls and looking in the dark the lights never work it's just that same cliched thing that you see in all of the all of the bad or lazy horror films. I'm not going to say every horror movie because there are horror movies that either do this well or do things better than what we're seeing in a film like this. But this is just more of the same, more of the typicalness going on. Virginia Madsen plays the mom, and I remember her in Candyman, but she's older in this movie, but man, she's still attractive. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Maybe because I'm getting older, or I, but I'm just found her like, wow, that's that's a hot mom. Good job, Kyle Gallner. I wouldn't blame you if you, if you tried in real life, honestly. I know it's weird. She, she's playing your mom, but she's not really your mom. Why not? Amanda Crew <laughs> plays Wendy, and I like her too. I, I like that this actress. I've seen her in a few things, and I just I always buy her. Even in horror movies, I'm like, yeah, sure, cool. Uh, but it, it just, yeah, nothing happens. You know, all these images of these ghosts who, they look like zombies because of their makeup, but all they ever do is pop up in the mirror, or pop up in a window, or pop up behind a door, and then it's a dream. Or is it a dream? Or is he daydreaming? Or is he being forced visions by the ghost? They don't explain it, and I don't really care. You also get, speaking of forced visions, you get flashbacks that Kyle Gallner is seeing of this kid who also went through some shit. And, and you get, it's the cover of the movie, it's, it's the cover of the poster, it was in all the trailers, very much promoted, of the shot where the kid has that gooey demon-like thing, or whatever it is, coming out of its mouth. It's a cool effect, it's a creepy image, but that's really all that the movie has going for it. I was not scared at all watching this. I was bored. I was almost, I was dozing off a little bit. I'll be honest, it just, it does not grip me. And then when you get to the end, and, and that's when the ghosts decide to finally do stuff. Because look, Elias Cotillas plays the priest. And I like him, not just because he played Casey Jones in the Ninja Turtles film, but here's a guy who seemed like he was genuine, trying to help the family and trying to do what he does. But it just, it, it all felt, felt nothing. I felt nothing for this family. I felt nothing for this plot. I felt nothing uh, about caring what happens throughout it. 
even though I'd already seen it, and because I knew what the ending was, rewatching it, I kind of just wanted to turn it off. <laughs> Didn't even really care to rewatch it. It's not horrible. It's not badly acted, or it's like I've seen plenty worse. But being blah, being bland, being middle of the road, isn't gonna cut it for me either. Yeah, this movie definitely never need to watch it ever again. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below. Maybe you enjoy The Haunting in Connecticut a lot more than I did. Maybe I'm being too harsh. Maybe I'm a dick. Maybe I'm an asshole. Let me know as long as you're you're not being a dick. Saying it to me, I'll, I'll gladly welcome your opinions on this film. I know there's a sequel, but I don't really know if I care enough to watch it. I've never seen it. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later! Souls taken over by a devilish pan. You got me walk, walk, walking on broken glass. Kicking out the door with a Jason mask. With a deck done with Chevy, but you motherfuckers know it's heavy. Anytime you're ready, you can get you with a bowie. Setting up to blow me, but the bitch don't know me. Who's going? I'm going. You know, I know that the man in the mirror is my next rival. I'm going, and I never thought I'd be so fast. Staring at the world from the end of my glass.